Welcome on Palm Sunday in the year of our Lord, 2023 AD. And we also celebrate this Sunday of the Passion of our Lord. It's a long service. Let's get started. Our opening hymn, and I invite you to stand with this opening hymn, is as also on the screen. Uh, 442, uh, verse 1, all glory, laud, and honor. We'll sing all three verses here to start. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may turn toward the center of the church in honor of the hearing of the Holy Gospel. From Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you will say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you. Humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! 
And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority of his word, forgive you all your sins. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you, the house of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness. That I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Behind the festal sacrifice with cords, 
up to the horns of the altar. You, you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading, which continues this Palm Passion Sunday of our Lord, is from Isaiah 50, chapter, verses, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Lord. to God. The gradual hymn at the name of Jesus. Verse 1. epistle is from Paul's letter to the Philippians in chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, 
but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand and join me. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. The Holy Gospel is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, chapters 26 through 27. You may be seated given the length of this gospel reading. We will stand later. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. I truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 
And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The Gospel Anthem, verse 15 of O Dearest Jesus. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the, people, the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, 
your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Then those who seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following at a distance, and as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus, that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and, and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What, were the, what further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. 
And a servant girl came up and said to him, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then when, Jesus, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and brought and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave them no answer. But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? 
But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And, twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way.
please stand for this portion of the gospel as you are able. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. So many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee when it was evening there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who also was a disciple of Jesus he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus then Pilate ordered it to be given to him and Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers? Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in, faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things 
is the Lord and Savior of the world. And in the one Lord of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not me, being of my substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious pilot. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, who is kingdom and will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Worship continues with the hymn of the day, A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, 438.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's message is entitled, My Time is at Hand. This is the Sunday of the church year dedicated for us to hear, to read, to pray, to experience the reality of Jesus, which he fully knew. My time is at hand. And so unfolds the passion of Jesus Christ. And when our time is in his hands, his will is for us to hear and believe. Jesus' passion is for us. He enters our vulnerable, untrusting, often uncaring worlds to turn us from ways leading to death to his fulfilling way. For life. Jesus, the shepherd who is God's own son, has indeed set his face like a flint. This Savior is resolute to accomplish his Father's will. This shepherd does not shrink back from his Father's course to lay down his life for his sheep. He guides and directs the swirling vortex of people and human agendas and events that surround him, even though they oppose him and throw the weight and will of all they have and are against him. Jesus wills to fulfill all scripture. He is the word incarnate, no less. So no wonder he accomplishes in action what his word has ever said. He speaks his word that foresees and reveals what God intends to bring about. And in the right time, he does it. How much time do we give to his word to reflect on how he deals with us? Are we receiving what he has done to turn us from destruction and death? Are we in tune with how much he loves and cares to give? Do we know what it meant for Jesus to give himself in sacrifice so that we come to faith and in faith that we do not perish but have his abundant and eternal life? Jesus' word stirs life up within us. Jesus' wisdom and omniscient word foretell our false bravados that fail in denial. We may turn and cry bitterly and run and hide, but Jesus has already spoken these things, so we then pay attention when we are called to turn to him to realize our failures in light of his word, but not so that we continue to fail. Rather, he moves us by his spirit to respond to his loving call, to restore us through the forgiveness that touches the heart of our need, that restores trust in him who is ever faithful and true. Jesus appeals to the betrayer, no less. He yearns for all to turn and repent and receive his forgiveness. Jesus anticipates our twisted logic and arguments and reasoning that lead to betrayal, 
that empty our souls of spirit and life through misunderstanding and unbelief that God himself is in Jesus Christ among us. Though we reject him, he is faithful to bear our sin in bloody crucifixion on the cross. According to his word, he has done all for our greater good and restoration. God alone can make all things new. In Jesus, he is at work also now. My time is at hand. With that statement, Jesus sent a couple of disciples to prepare the Passover meal. They were to go to a certain man, unnamed, who would lead them when they got there to the place Jesus selected. One reason could be to ensure security and safety and no interruption. If Judas had learned where it was earlier, Jesus used his divine knowing to keep the place hidden until the right time. He, the Lamb of God, who came to take away the sin of the world, at the climax of God's timing, then knowingly gave to his disciples, and now also to us, the gift of his body and blood. His supper feeds us, as he says, with himself, the bread of life, given and shed as it was to be in the course of that very day for us to eat and drink and receive. So his life enters us. The forgiveness of sins on account of his blood brings life and peace with God and one another. His unfailing love enters our bodies and souls to turn us from death to life. Jesus, in fulfillment of his word, bore through the pain of his obedience to death on the cross. But God doesn't stop there. He's not held by death, nor Satan's derailing logic. Jesus spoke word that shows his time at hand did not end in his crisis of crucifixion. He did not remain bound in death. According to his word, he remains at hand. He burst through death to life beyond and triumphant. I tell you, I will not drink again of the, this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus' word directs us to his future, which he assures he will share with us who place our faith into him. Recall further how Jesus broke his silence when the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Time in Jesus' hands will serve the fulfillment of his word in its promise for life eternal. Jesus ultimately causes even death and Satan and betrayal and all things to serve his living purpose of redemption. He, the Lord of time, is Lord over Satan and death. And by grace, through the forgiveness of your sins, he is Lord of you and me. His beloved sons and daughters, his flock, his precious sheep. We can confidently pray and live by the word of God. For Jesus has led the way fulfilled also for us in the words of Psalm 31 at 14 through 16. I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. 
Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're in. <clears throat> the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Worship continues with the offering hymn, Your Only Son, No Sin to Hide. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For pardon and renewal that the blessed Son of God would lift up the gates of our hearts and be glorified as the Savior of sinners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the preaching of the Holy Gospel and the administration of his sacraments would convert those who do not yet know Christ in every mission field around the world that the Lord would bless and protect missionaries and their families, especially in hostile places, and that he would banish from us any prejudice that might hinder our mission work here or abroad. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
for all Christian fathers, that receiving Christ and trusting his atoning sacrifice, they may be enlivened to sacrificial love for their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in authority over us, that in the fulfillment of their duties, they may have the same mind as Christ our King, who laid down his life for his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer illness or physical disability, especially Shirley, Val, Drew, Marjorie's son, Judy, Lee, Richard, Egan, Pastor Jonathan, <clears throat> um, and these we name before the Lord now. Christina Hicks and my wife Linda will be sorrowful. My sister Leah. Joyce. That God would bless them according to his gracious will, and that we may serve their bodily needs. And for those who mourn the death of loved ones, including Heinz, that they would have peace and comfort in his holy word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For a worthy reception of Christ's body and blood, that as he entered Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, so we may receive him according to his promises for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that your grace is sufficient for our salvation and that our background is no barrier to experiencing your gift of eternal life. We give thanks for the faith and courage of those who leave other religions to follow Christ, often at great personal cost. Grant them your spirit for trust, hope, perseverance, and even joy as they encounter trials on account of their newfound faith. We ask that their faithful witness have impact on others and that you firmly establish them as more than conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray to you, our Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, Show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna. Save us now in the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again. And that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he, blessed. 
this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen our lord jesus christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Christ the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Oh, Christ the The Death of Jesus Christ Our Lord. As this may not be familiar to everyone, I will sing the first verse. i 
true faith to life eternal. Go in this peace. The congregation may stand and we continue then with the Nunc Dimittis. <clears throat> Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine unto you and be gracious to you. The Lord look up, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Oh, sacred head that would Peace and blessing be with you. Mm -hmm. 